I had this guy message me on Instagram asking me about some uh, uni advice. Um, he's going into in, in his second year of um, university. Um, he's doing um, teaching and um, he wants to know how he can settle his nerves. So I read the comment that he said um, sent to me. He goes, um, I'm studying in ECU <coughs> in WA and had a really crappy prac, like it was overwhelming. What would you recommend for me to do in the second year prac to keep my nerves down and also make sure I'm doing the most beneficial classroom management so I don't get walked over? So uh, yeah, now we call him. Now we call him. Let's give it a go. Hey bud, how you going? Hey, how are you? I'm good, man. Good. What's been up with him? Not much, just normal day in Perth. Right? Normal day in Perth. I feel ya. I feel ya. Um, okay, so uh, your when when do you start back at uni? Uh, I start back in the twenty fourth of February. Yep, twenty fourth of Feb. Yep, and uh, this is your second year or your third year? Second year. So you've done one prac already, and that was the two or three-week one? Um, the first prac I did in semester one was 10 days. Yeah. Sorry, seven-day prac, and then the second one was a 10-day prac. Yeah. Are you doing Are you doing a two-year master's, like a uh, dip ed, or the full thing? I'm doing my um, bachelor education. Okay. And what are you majoring in and minoring in? Because I'm only second year, we don't. I don't think we choose um, our majors yet. But okay. I want to make um, special needs, so special education. Yeah, well, it's changed since since I did it. I feel old. It was only a couple of years ago. <laughs> okay. Um. Yeah. Well, when I did it, I graduated with major in PE and minor in science, and I I chose them like at the start of the degree. That's interesting. Oh wow! Yeah. Yeah. Okay, anyway, um, how old are you, bud, PJ? 21. 21, okay, so you're 21 and your first prac wasn't that great, is that correct? Um, the first prac was like this expectant of like, I didn't really, they were really like walking me through it, and then the second prac when I had to do the, my classes, my official classes, I got really like, I couldn't control the classroom as well as I thought had, what I as well as I wanted or deliver. Yeah. So it was your first time, and and what what year group was that? Uh, year one. Year one. Okay. So you're you're teaching primary school. Ah. Okay. All right. All right. So it's a little bit, it's a very a little bit different to what I'm doing. I'm doing high school. All right. So the oh. year ones. Um. And so, can you give me an example of how they responded to you? Um. This a lot. Some most of the, sometimes they'll literally be like um, they would literally just want to muck around, not really like give the full guide attention. If you know what I mean, like this. Yeah, and and what did you see? Sorry, what did you see your mentor teacher doing with them when you were observing? Um, I saw her. Well, I had two mentor teachers who were really good. Um, they were they as soon as a kid. Like started to act up, they'd stamp their foot down like real quickly, like making sure they used the low key responses and all those things. Yeah. I did some of those, but they didn't really listen to me as well as I did to the mental teacher. Okay. All right. So, and what term was this in? What term was this all in? Okay, term four. So let's paint the picture here. You've got uh, a bunch of year ones, which is what, year, uh, what year, six, seven-year-olds, yeah? Yeah. And they've been used to the same teacher for probably the entire year. Yeah. And it's term four. They're pretty much finished. And I don't know about year ones particularly, but most school kids... Term four is like a uh, kind of, they start to sign off. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah okay. Like, yeah. So there's a lot of variables you've got to think about in terms of ch um, child behavior. And in particular, the younger kids, 
um, what I found is they don't really like change and 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 sudden change, um, and kids are brutal. They're very honest. They're they're straight straight up. Like if they don't like you, it's not really because of you specifically. There may be a few other variables, like I just mentioned. Um, but to get to the way to get around that is to um, analyze and figure out what they want. You know, give them something first and. They say you're not supposed to be the student's friend, but you need to play the game and give them give them an opening. Make them make them think that they're in control. Does that make sense? That's a good way to think about it. Yeah. So make them think they're in control. It's I call it positive manipulation because you're wanting you're 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 doing something for them to you're not forcing them to do anything, but you're you're guiding them into a behavior that's optimal for your learning environment. So um, your pedagogy. So you're, um, you want to make sure that, yeah, you, you, you give them the floor, but also start to say things like, let's say a kid starts acting up, there'll be a method and you've got to follow through. The biggest thing I found with teachers, and this is after they finished uni, is they don't follow through with their consequences. How did you go about following through? Um, what do you mean by that? So let's say you have a behavior management system and if a student is not behaving properly, you have a consequence. What would your consequence be? Well, I just used, you know, the traffic light, the traffic light system? Yep. And did you use and that? Did you use that straight away, or did you give them a warning, or what did you do? Well, at first, at first, um, I gave them warnings, and then the second lesson, my teachers literally said, "These kids are, these kids are in a really like crazy. They're not listening to even us as mental teachers. So, if you need to go straight to like part in the class or time out, just." By all means, in store, don't give warnings today because they need that authority. Okay, all right. So, and that and that was your one and only prac. Yeah, you haven't done your second prac yet, have you? Uh, no, I haven't done my okay. second. Two. I haven't. Okay. Two no problem. No problem. All right. Um. So, your first prac is always going to be the hard one, like in terms of breaking the ice, right? And. Yeah. And this, in regards to your behavior management or how you get along with the kids, you, you'll build on it. You'll grow on it. It takes time. And the one thing I learned about uni is a lot of it is theoretical. There are some practical parts of it at uni. But when you go inside the classroom, it's not like they, it's not exactly like they told you at uni. Is that right? Yeah. But can you repeat that, sir? Uh, whatever you get taught at uni isn't nowhere near exactly like it is in a classroom. Is that correct? No. Yeah. No, it's not exactly like it's a different ball game. It's a completely different ball game. Okay, so the way to handle that is obviously you have to be aware of that, and it's good that you did your prac early. I did my pr- first prac in the second semester of the second year, and the only one thing that I gr- <coughs> that I agreed with with my mentor. Um, back then was that it was way too late in a degree to do that. Yeah, that's funny one. Yeah, but so you're lucky. Now, here's, here's, here's why it was the only th- reason. I, it was the only thing I agreed with that mentor. Um, and this is the story I want to tell you, and this will, be, um, this will be good content. So can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can. Okay, so my second semester of my second year, I... Um, had a mentor and it was a two-week thing or 10-day thing. Uh, eight On my eighth day, I was failed and I was withdrawn from the school. Okay. Yeah, okay. So leading up to that, the there was a few different elements. So the teacher, he called me condescending and... Yeah, from the from the very beginning, and it was so hard to recover from that because he mis misinterpreted me, um, and assumed that I was a pleb. Anyway, um, yeah. so what happened was I tried to recover 
and I felt there was a lot of short man syndrome. Do you know what that means? I, I know the basis of it. Yeah. So I felt like he had short man syndrome, but that, that was my assumption. Anyway, when he sat me down that morning on the eighth day of my prac, and I, I had good relationships with all the other teachers that I was involved with in that school. I had good relationships with the students. There was no behavior management issues, nothing. Um, there was a few hiccups with preparation because it was my first prac, but I did my absolute best to make sure that I was prepared and everything. Anyway, long story short, the teacher sat me down uh, at about 10.30 in the morning on a Wednesday and said that I was a danger to kids, I was a danger to their education, and that I should reconsider my career choice. Why? Why? Because he just didn't like me. <laughs> yeah. Now, my supervisor came in. Do you have a supervisor that comes in? Yeah, I did. Yeah. I, my, my, what did your supervisor say? She said to me that, um, well, hang on, I can grab my, um, my file. That's okay. Just, just, just do it out of memory. Just, what, what do you remember? She just said, like, if they're not going to expect you to know everything. Yeah. Like, just keep, even if, like, some of the feedback that you got was, like, really, like, stern, just don't give up on it. Just keep going at it because... The kids like you, but keep practicing your deliverance, and you'll be. She, I got a real, I got a lot of really good feedback. Yeah. And it's like this: try work on your behavior management and all those things, and you'll do really, really well. Yeah, man, that's right. Your supervisor nailed it, so you got to keep practicing. Absolutely, my supervisor passed me with flying colors. I don't mean to flex, but my supervisor passed me with flying colors. Both times that he visited, he said that I was, I had everything sorted, I was doing well, I, yeah, he gave me great marks. But my mentor still decided to fail me and withdrew me. Do you know what withdrawn, uh, getting withdrawn from a school means? You can't um, go back into the course. Yep, you get expelled, you get withdrawn from the university. It took me three months to fight it with appeals. Now, no disrespect to the ECU, um, school of uh, education but the people that were involved during that time did not follow procedure properly i was not represented properly and i had a whole bunch of mess a whole big bonfire that i was trying to put out and luckily i had someone to help me at the time and i was able to keep a level head and push through get it turned around and i graduated graduated without even failing one unit and then the first year out of university, I got um, pretty much fully booked out as a relief teacher across three schools. And then by the third term in my first year, I was um, contracted my first term as a full full time contract. And then in the second, oh, in the fourth term of that same year, they offered me another contract, which is unheard of because. In term four, being re getting relief is hard because year 11s have finished halfway through and year 12s have finished halfway through. So they do internal relief. They still offered me a contract. Does that sound like I'm a danger to kids and their education? No. No. It was just the, the, the one person's opinion. That was it. Do you, reckon that's, do you reckon that could have completely destroyed someone's career if they... If they we're in a different mindset to what I was? Yeah, of course. So in term four, long story short again, I rejected that contract because I had one interview at another school and this was a, for a permanent position. And I got it. So permanency, that's it. I don't have to, I'm not in the rat race anymore when it comes to trying to find a permanent job in a school system. So yeah. Three year turnaround from someone telling me that I was not meant to be a teacher, I should reconsider my choices, to being permanent at a school, to being picked up by someone who thinks the complete opposite. That's, yeah, that's, 
inspirational. So think about that, man. Think about that. If if things are getting tough, I want you to use that story and say, well, damn, at least I don't have it as bad as Sev does or Sev did. Okay? Yeah, I, I was like, do you know how you said about the ECU thing? Yeah. yeah like, obviously, my, because my camera is on and it's recording. Yep. Yeah. Um, I understand where you're coming from with them. I'm not recording your screen, by the way. I'm just recording the audio. Oh, cool. Well, yeah, I understand what you're saying. Like, I understand that it can be a bit hard to deal with. Yeah, it's and it's and it's like I'm not blaming anyone, and it's the thing is all I went all the way up to the dean of the ECU, the top, the top boss, and we had a, a meeting and an interview and everything. Like that's how serious it got. But the thing is, man, don't give up. I didn't give up. I didn't give up. I know, I know, it sounds cliche, but that's it's the perfect story, and I love I love telling it, and like. Had I followed then and there, I would be doing something completely different, right? Now, here's one more thing I'd give, uh, I give—I want to give to you. Um, you're 21. Are you turning 22 this year or have you already turned 21? Yeah. Okay. So, you finished school when you were 18, yeah? Yeah. What did you do between you finishing school and starting uni? Did you have a gap year? Actually went to America for three months. Excellent. You traveled. That's the best thing ever. That's awesome. And how did you find that? Pretty rewarding because I went to a special needs summer camp in Iowa. Nice. With kids with That's so cool. Did you find did you learn something about yourself? Yeah. And what did you learn about yourself? A lot like that. Without sounding more appreciate that I'm more than just like I can influence a person like no other there you go there you go take that motivation and take it into the classroom next time you go okay there you go use that confidence man and and there will be kids in the future that that will hate you that will say they hate you and that will try to do that they will be mean to you I've had kids try to fight me and I'm six foot ten. And yeah, but man, don't don't let it don't take it to heart. They're kids. They don't know. They don't know that much. They they they're still learning. You can't take offense ever, because yeah. here's another quick story for you. The kids that were calling me mean, saying to me that they hated me, that I was the worst teacher ever. Those kids ended up graduating school, and those are the same kids that are messaging me now, asking me for advice because they realize that I care a lot. Yeah. And and I ask them and it's not it's not for an ego boost, but it's just like cur- curious to see what where I'm at in the world of education. I'm I'm curious to them saying, "Have you messaged any other teacher? Have you emailed them? Have you contacted them in any way?" Uh, and they said, "No, nah, you're the only one that I want to talk to." Does that sound like someone yeah. that's an ed- a danger to students' education? And I should no. So nobody knows you one hundred percent as much as you do, and even you don't know yourself one hundred percent. Especially at twenty one slash twenty two, there's so many things that you're still yet to figure out. I'm so stoked to hear that you took a gap year and you went traveling for three months in America. I I was a little bit worried, not gonna lie, because a lot of a lot of kids who finish school who want to become teachers, they go straight into uni without actually experiencing life properly. They haven't experienced traveling by themselves. They haven't experienced stress um, without any help from their parents, and they haven't experienced yeah life skills like. Like they teach you at school, but you know, it's just like going to school, being a teacher. You don't know what it's like until you actually do it. And when you're a kid, you don't know what life is like as an adult until you actually do it. Now, here's the problem, and this is a big problem that I'm seeing. A lot of students who become student teachers, they go straight from high school into university and they go through the system and then they graduate um, university as teachers and then they go straight into school. They're pretty much at school their whole life. 
they have no big gap. I know there's holidays and stuff, but they're, they're, they haven't had that break. And I feel like it's important. There was somewhere that I read that yeah. um, teachers, um, teachers should not apply for university until they're 25, have at least five to seven years gap of actual living, trying, you know? How many teachers can give advice on full-time retail work? None. The ones, the ones that go straight from high school into uni and straight into a job, none of them can, can actually tell you what retail is like. None of them can tell you what hospitality is like at full-time way, like full-time job. Yeah, sure, you can work as a retailer or a, a hospitality person while you're at school part-time, but full-time and, you know, being a manager, being a laborer, you know, that they need to taste that. And also traveling by yourself is one of the best things you can do. So good on you, man. And I really, I really wish that you... Um, can travel a bit more before you finish your degree and because what I get what the kids get from me is they don't just get my education which is apparently is a danger to them they also get my life stories do you yeah, think do you yeah. think do you think those kids that come out of school into uni and then straight back into school have pretty interesting life stories Not really. Not many. There, there will be some there's some outliers. There will be some exceptions, not going to lie. But most of the time, yeah. they're robots. They, they sound like robots. And that's that's just what I've seen. There, are, there have been some amazing academic teachers who went straight out of school into uni, back into school, and who are amazing. But they're gifted. They're, they're born for it. But there's some that just, they just don't feel that rapport. They just can't get the message across. And they're more academic. They're not actually, they don't have that behavior management skill. But yeah, to sum, to sum it all up, man, make sure that you're, you're practicing and know that it will get better with the more you practice. Um, volunteering at schools is probably one of the best things you can do right now because at the end of your degree, you may have already made friends with your uni people, but at the end of your degree, they become your enemies and not literally enemies, they become enemies because they're all looking for the same job. They become your com competition. Yeah. You know? So the best way to get an advantage of that is to volunteer at schools. Every person that I've ever talked to that's doing a degree right now in teaching, or any degree really, should be going and volunteering uh, at the profession they're part of or they're wanting to do. Because at the end of your degree, you'll have two to three years experience at that school and if they look, once they open up the floodgates for jobs, you'll already know the kids, you'll already know the staff, you'll already know the system and, and where everything is at that school. You're going to be the best candidate as a graduate. Like I've done um, uh, education assistant work. Perfect. That's yeah, awesome. Like, Do it. No, man. Do it. Do that more and more and more and try to do a few different schools. And um, yeah, keep your head up, make sure you volunteer, and um, and yeah, all the best day. Eh? Like, yeah. Do you have any more questions? Um, I had something in my head, but then I got friends. That's all right, man. There's always another time. But that's, that's a pretty solid um, phone call, I reckon. Um, I don't know. I don't know if you if you agree. Uh, I reckon there's some pretty good um, solid content right there. Yeah, I enjoyed it, and I've seen like your live streams and stuff, and they're really good. Like yesterday. Thank you, thank you so much. It's it's just a matter of experience. It's just a matter of experience and being confident. Like the kids don't mess around in my class. Sometimes I give them a little bit, but they know. Yeah. And it's all about the follow through. When the kids act up a little bit more, it's because they don't believe that you're going to follow through. And when you follow through, they'll end up being like, you know what? This guy's not going to stop. We may as well stop. And it's always the kids that stop first because, hey, <laughs> they're, they're at school. You can, you can make their lives a little bit harder if they don't um, um, comply with what, you, with what you want. But remember, always be suggestive. Don't be uh, an, an enforcer. 
be suggestive, and give them options. Have you learnt about that yet, the options method? Yeah. Give them options. Give them options and both and options that are that are suitable to you. So they whichever one they pick, they, they benefit you first and foremost and and they then they get on with whatever they need to do. Let me know yeah, how you go. I agree with yeah man. Let me know how you go. Alright, I've got to head off. Thank you very right. much for the call. No worries, man. You can you can message me anytime and ask for more advice if you want. I'm going to come into the uni to talk about this as well. Um, I need to get a hold of um, uh, a professor because um, we've got something and I want to bring it in. Sound good? All right. All right, buddy. Thank you, sir. All right, mate. Catch you later, PJ. Bye. Bye. All right, PJ, ladies and gentlemen. Um, yeah. Straight half an hour of uh, my story, my advice um, for anyone that's at uni studying teaching, for anyone studying any degree really, um, all you just need to remember is it's hard, it's hard when you first get out there and it gets easier the more you practice, as cliche as that may sound. Volunteering at an establishment like Sabine. She volunteers at um, a mental institution because she's studying psychology. She loves it. One, you get a taste tester of what it's like before you finish your degree. What if you finish your degree and you absolutely hate it? There are so many teachers out there, qualified teachers that aren't even teachers anymore because they realize that the classroom is not for them. And that's fine. The thing is, you can save a lot of time if you learn the magic of volunteering volunteer at the schools because it gives you two amazing things one it gives you experience two it gives you experience to know that if you're going to like it or not and three it gives you a, a better chance of getting a job as soon as you graduate a hundred thousand percent better chance than for someone who's got their degree even master's degree and hasn't really actually stepped in the classroom apart from prac you have a, such a better chance of getting a job because it's showing your face. And on that note, when you do apply for a job, don't email them your resume. Don't do it. Walk in there. Show your face. Book an appointment. If they just want to send, if they just want an email um, because they're, they're full, go in, book an appointment. What, what can you do? Worst case scenario, say, I'm sorry, uh, please just come back. Just, just drop it in there as an email. You show your face. You've got that extra chance for the principal to walk past. That's what happened to me. That's what happened to me. I was uh, uh, we came into a school and uh, I was talking to the relief coordinator. The principal walked past. My story is that they noticed my height, so that was an advantage. But yeah, that was it. Sweet. That's it. Done. Thanks for listening, guys. And I hope you enjoy it. Let me know what you think. Any questions? If you wanna, if you wanna be part of a phone call. This is me on Instagram, at Sevspix. Love to hear from you. Good, thanks.